Well, I've crossed borders in, in so many ways, it's hard to, to go back, but let me, let, let me list some of them. Just to, I started in Isleta, uh, which is uh, less than a quarter of a mile from the Mexican border, right outside the outskirts of El Paso. And um, at 18, really not knowing much better than anything else, I didn't even know what the Ivy League was or had never visited even the state of Massachusetts, I went to Harvard. I was accepted to Harvard. So that was the first huge uh, jump that I did from, from Texas and the border to Cambridge and Harvard University and the Ivy League. And that included, of course, a geographical border, but, all, but also a cultural border. For me, you know, I arrived at Harvard um, not even recognizing the university. I thought we were driving into a park when we first <laughs> arrived and the, the cab driver said, no, this is a university, uh, this is not a park. And um, so I was clueless. So I think that's not, a not just only a geographic border, but a cultural border that I began to cross. And uh, over time, um, it also became an intellectual border, you know, learning about myself. Because the irony, of course, was that whereas I grew up in El Paso, and had spent my early life there, I knew nothing, really next to nothing, uh, about Mexican history, about El Paso history, and one of the reasons is because in Texas high schools, you're not taught any of that. Um, and I had to go to Harvard to start taking courses with people like John Womack, the great history professor that wrote Zapata in the Mexican Revolution, and with Terry Carl, the, uh, who later became head of the Center for International Affairs uh, in Latin America at Stanford. And I took course after course in Latin American history, Mexican history, simply to learn who I was, where I was from, um, the context of my life. Well, the, the meaning for me of crossing all of these borders, and uh, whether they're geographic or linguistic or cultural or intellectual, is trying to find the home and expanding the sense of home. And what I mean by this is that, you know, Chicanos, Mexicanos, Mexican Americans uh, have been in this country before it was even uh, the United States and parts like Texas, where the Tejanos, really the border crossed them, they didn't cross the border. And to join the American experiment, as citizens, as people who have a voice, as people who have a, uh, are involved in the political process and the intellectual process, as people who want to see their stories on the bookshelves, in libraries, so that we do not feel excluded. You know, we need to keep expanding the sense of home that includes uh, us in a very uh, important and essential way. So for me, that's what the meaning is all about. You expand your sense of home when you, you know, say, uh, I don't just belong here in Latino literature. No, I also belong in American literature. And that's a, you know, a much bigger uh, place and a more important place. No, I don't, don't want to just be put in a stereotypical place. I want to expand where uh, I belong. And that should be, I think, a quest for every Mexican-American uh, right now. And certainly that's been my quest. Um, to expand the sense of home where we belong and we are the, the people who are on the outside, the people who do not necessarily belong or have not belonged in, in several places and trying to make those places our home, the place where we should be, the place where we do belong, where we have things to contribute, whether it's books or it's a political process or votes uh, or a voice in, in, in making sure that our community has these voices speaking up for what the community wants.